Now, your report found that the Metropolitan Police has not learned uh, from those failings. What led you to that conclusion? Well, they have done some things. Uh, and so, for example, um, back when the port murders happened, they were very restrictive about who they considered a family, so they wouldn't talk to friends, partners, etc. Now they're better than that. They've made some improvement in the way that, that uh, the murder teams talk to local detectives. That's got better. Right. But still, I mean, there are about 30 deaths a day that the police go to in London. Uh, and out of that, that's 10,000 a year, out of that, they'll spot about 100, 150 murders. Um, the rest of them, they say, are non-suspicious, uh, and we don't think they do thorough enough checks, uh, and they're not well supervised enough when they're doing them, uh, and therefore there's always this potential that something as dreadful as Port could happen again. So what, what has led you to think that the Stephen Port murders could happen again, and what sort of deaths are sort of being dismissed rather than investigated properly? Well, the police are called to a death if it's unexpected, so it could be a suspected suicide, it could be some sort of accident, um, and they're supposed to do a series of checks and then decide on the nature of the death and report it to the coroner. Uh, and then that's supposed to be supervised uh, and they're supposed to do background checks on the person that died and the person that reported it uh, and take witness statements when appropriate. And they're just not doing any of that thoroughly enough uh, and they're relying on luck. They tell us they're relying on luck to see if there was any connections between two deaths. So, you know, for other crime types, they'll do lots of analysis of the areas it happens and the type of, uh, type of area it might happen in. Um, for unexplained deaths, they don't. So, as I say, reliant on luck to, to join the dots. Uh, and what went fundamentally wrong eight years ago with those dreadful four murders is that they didn't recognise them as murders in the first place and then they didn't realise the connections between them, which most people would have seen as obvious. Now, the Metropolitan Police's issues and, and problems in investigating crimes against women and, and treatment of women is, is well documented. Do they also have an issue in investigating crimes against gay men? I think the families of the Stephen Port victims uh, would say so. Um, we didn't particularly look at what happened um, uh, eight years ago. We weren't reinvesting that case. We were looking at whether they are getting it right now and we didn't see uh, any evidence of, of uh, bad treatment, uh, a different treatment for different groups now, so we didn't see homophobia now, uh, although I don't dispute the family's view from what happened eight years ago. I think the Met's been in a lot of uh, bad news recently about uh, racism, about homophobia, about sexism. Um, I think what our report shows is that the new commissioner has also got a job on his hands with some basic issues of professionalism and expertise. Now, Stephen Port's victims used uh, the Grinder dating app, which is how they came into contact with him and, mm. and ended up being killed. Do, do these dating apps make detective work easier? Because there is a digital footprint. There's, there's, a, there's a trail you can follow. Well, I think in the Port case, there was definitely a trail that, that you should follow. And it's that sort of thing that we'd be expecting officers now to do. What, we're, what we were disappointed by is the what we call the lack of a intellectual curiosity about a professional investigative mindset that on a police officer goes to something that's happened and has a sort of suspicious eye and is looking for things that don't look right. What we saw was just signing off too quickly and coming to conclusions too quickly uh, and that obviously has a degree of risk with it. Now the Louise Casey review mm. uh, found that crimes against women such as domestic violence and sexual assault were being dealt with by units uh, that weren't deemed to be specialised or, or senior and they just didn't have the resources, they were mishandling evidence. Is that what we're seeing with these sorts of crimes against gay men as well? I think that's ex what, 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 what she reported is played out through what we've found. So when the Met investigate murder, it's specialist teams, you know, relatively well resourced and quite experienced and expert, and they do a really good job. So when a murder is identified, uh, the Met get the get the uh, the perpetrator 90 something percent, very high high success rate, and it's done really well. And in fact, the Port murder, when they realised it was murders, it was a very good investigation. The problem is, as you say, this difference between the well-resourced specialist teams and the the sort of general uh, frontline cops who are investigating crimes against women, unexpected deaths and they're not doing it with the level of professionalism and the level of supervision they need to be properly effective. 